I think of it as taking the pulse of the ecosystem. What we know when we study long-term trends at Hubbard Brook, if you see these graphed, they wobble up and down. So there could be an overall trend, and at Hubbard Brook we've been tracking some of these trends for 60 plus years. If you take just a, a, a fragment of that or a snapshot, it could give you a very different result. So I think about long-term ecosystem monitoring really as the backbone of everything that we do at Hubbard Brook. The bird research at Hubbard Brook uh, began in 1969. We were looking primarily at the role of birds in forest ecosystems, how, what roles they take, how they interact with other parts of the system. In the 1980s, it became apparent that a lot of these songbirds uh, that occur in forests are declining. The big question that came up was what causes changes in numbers of birds in the forest. She's just been foraging high up. Um, I haven't seen her low. There's the male. It turns out that there are a lot of different factors affecting these bird populations. Things like food supply, predation, and also the vegetation patterns. Uh, many of the bird species have a specific requirement that they must have in order to occur in a given area. And as the vegetation changes over time, it becomes either more suitable or less suitable for different species. To target net a uh, black-throated blue warbler male, we set up this six meter um, mist net. A key to catching these birds is using playback. So we try to mimic the call or song that the territorial bird that we're trying to capture comes in and sings. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to match his song as best I can and his volume. I try not to cut him off so I can pause it. He's pretty close to the net right now. So I'm going to bring the volume down a little bit more to be more aggressive. He's not singing back to it right now. So Sarah just caught this um, target male. She lured him in with playback um, and I just extracted him. So now we're gonna put him in a bird bag um, to get him to calm down a little bit. He's still a little fired up um, from thinking there was a foreign male in his territory. Um, so we'll just put him in this bag here and it usually gets him pretty calm. Um, so then we can um, get him ready to be banded. We study forest resilience, certainly in ecosystem resilience here at Hubbard Brook. I also like to think in terms of resilience and, and how these insights, scientific insights that are coming from the experimental forest equip environmental decision makers with information. And information, I think, is one of the key ingredients to being a resilient community. So a community of people interacting with the land. I'm going to be putting on three different color bands and then one aluminum USGS band. So this bird is going to be red over aluminum, green over pink. So red over aluminum goes on his right leg. Put the red on, make sure they're closed. Each bird species seems to have its own habitat requirements. And so if you want to manage for one particular bird, you can come up with a set of recommendations to do that. If you want to ma kind of manage for a whole suite of species, that's more, more difficult. And it depends on where you put your goals are. Mainly maintaining habitat, <laughs> in the broad sense, uh, is, is the key factor. If you're after forest species, having a forest out there is important. If you want early successional species that occur in the, the younger stages of a forest, then I mean, a certain cutting pattern that allows for a certain part of the land to be in young regeneration stages uh, can be important. So this bird is 46 millimeters. If the white patch that we see on their wing is smaller, typically that denotes a second year male 
Um, and if it's longer, that usually means that it's an ASY male, um, after second year male. Long-term studies in general uh, allow one to track changes that are happening and be able to evaluate what the environmental drivers of those changes might be. You really need that long-term record um, in order to understand what would be otherwise imperceptible. So the same way you use a microscope for looking at something at this fine level of detail or a telescope for looking at something that's way out, it enhances our ability to perceive these trends. They would otherwise be invisible to us, so they are invaluable records. You know, I think about facts and I think about Hubbard Brook, like what is it that we produce in terms of uh, um, a commodity or a resource, and it's this knowledge that can be put to use in informed policy and practice. 9.56. Okay. All right, I'm going to release him right after I get him out of this tube. <laughs> there he goes. We're here on a private property in Norwich, Vermont, and we're here today to kind of look at how um, scientific research can help inform management of the forest, particularly from the lens of forest bird habitat. Audubon Vermont came together with the Vermont Woodlands Association and the American Forest Foundation to, to help folks think about how to steward the forested landscape in ways that would help really support uh, leading with wildlife and birds. We are known as a bird conservation organization, less so in terms of a, a forest management organization. So that's where our partnership with um, the forestry community, um, in particular private consulting foresters, to really kind of bring Audubon's background and specialization in birds and habitat needs with the forestry community who's well versed in um, how to manage the forest and see how these things are complementary to each other. Our objective is to really focus on trying to improve the, the woodland setting for, for wildlife in general as well as to improve the nature of the, the species out there, uh, tree species out there. You know, I think the most important thing for birds here um, is that it's still forested uh, and it hasn't been converted to houses and, and parking lots. When I think about management, I, I really do think that we have a responsibility to produce the wood products that we use as a society. And I look at, at my tree farming and its intersection to lots of different wildlife. I try to see, is there something unique about this particular property that we need to either enhance or protect? And above and beyond that, I am, I am farming for trees, but I'm definitely fascinated by, by when we make changes in the, in the woods, uh, which species are we promoting, which species are, are we possibly negatively impacting. Audubon Vermont's role really in, is to bring that scientific research to application. We're kind of a, almost a, an intermediary or pass-through for taking that scientific research and getting it to be implemented on the ground. One bird in particular that we think a lot about and has been a, a part of a lot of studies in Hubbard Brook and other experimental forests is the black-throated blue warbler. That's a bird which really requires a nice, dense understory or regeneration layer in the forest. And so some of the work that's been done in these experimental forests and, and the management that's been used over time to try to um, enhance the habitat conditions for those species, we take that, that research and apply it to the parcels, uh, the private parcels that we look at here in Vermont. This is a female, black-throated blue warbler. They have the same white wing patch as the males, and they also have this really white um, supercilium here above their eyebrow. But other than that, they're pretty drab. They look so different from the males that they were once thought to be two different species. So you can see how the feathers are all gone and it's very, her skin is very wrinkly. And if you were to feel it, it's very warm. So this is the area that her whole, her skin is resting right up tight against the eggs, keeping them warm. One of the biggest take home messages that I hope people who experience our programs will walk away with is just demystifying science very generally. People often think of science as something that's not for them or something that's happening in, in a, you know, a, someone in a lab coat is doing that somewhere. And hopefully through exposure to Hubbard Brook education and outreach, people will realize that what we're really looking at are very basic questions and very basic methods for, under, for answering those questions. Hubbard Brook research program is one of the longest and most intensive research programs of this kind anywhere, anywhere in the world. 
There are one or two others, perhaps one in Europe, one in England, uh, that are not as long, but not as focused and not as intensive. And North America it certainly is the longest and most intensive ecosystem research program. I've processed um, this bird and I put color bands on here so every time that we see her from here on out we'll know it's this individual and I'm just going to release her. Her nest is just right over there so I'm going to release her really close to her nest and so she can get back to her eggs.